y'all? Jim Panky here. I've got a lick, just, just a lick for you. It's something that I I enjoy using. And what you saw was a over exaggeration. Was an over exaggeration? A over exaggeration? Whatever. Anyway, uh, but it'll be something that you can use. And basically what it is, it's some planned dissonance. Now we, in music, we not always fond of things that are dissonant sounding. But we can use sounds like that to build tension intentionally and then release it and it creates interest in what we're doing. Now, I tend to use this idea more times than not when I'm playing backup, but you can also use these shapes or this shape in, uh, in a break if you wanted to. My recommendation is don't overdo it. Use it sparingly. It is a powerful sound, and at first it might just not be pleasant to your ear, and that's okay, but, you know, the more you do it, the more you like it, the more you hear it, and I, I think you'll get a kick out of it, and I think the folks that you're playing with will, their ears will perk up, if, if their ears can do that. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, so let's look at what I just did. I'll break it down real slow and we'll, we'll go through it and I'll show it to you like how I would use it in a backup. But what I'm doing, the, the shape, let me, let me scoot up and show you the shape that I'm doing. So what I've got going on is, is I'm using a G shape, but I'm, I'm not going to use my ring finger. So it's a G shape, and it's just pinky on the first string, fifth fret, index. And then, so that's my shape. And what, what you're going to do, you could build a seventh chord by laying this index finger down. But you could also add the sixth note of the scale to it, and that creates some dissonance. So what I do, that's the shape that I'm using. Clear? And you can use that over a, a G. You can use it over C, over D, pretty much anywhere you want to use it. And you're going to use it whenever it feels good, whenever it sounds right to you. So I'm going to back up and I'll stick it in a song for you. And I'll show you the right hand pattern that I'm doing. The right hand pattern that I'm doing... Three, one, three, two, one, three. And then we're gonna change to that new shape. One, three, two, one, five, two, three. And I'll stick a tab down there in the description for you. So. And then you can slide up to C. And then up to D, and you can slide that if you want. And you can go back to your G. And you could use it in a song. Is it true that I've lost you? Am I not the only one? After all this pain and sorrow, darling, thank See how that 
works in a in a tune, and you can use it in, in, anywhere. Uh, let's say we were going to do Lonesome Road Blues, and refer back to my video on that. And so, if we're doing Lonesome Road Blues, we normally go. that C, you could replace that with a new idea. So, see how that works? So, it creates some dissonance. Now, you may or may not be ready for this, and that's totally okay, but I wanted to throw that out there as something for you to be thinking about, something for you to try. Give it a whirl. See what you think. If this is something that you can use or something you're already doing, let me know down in the comments. Be sure to hit a like button and uh, maybe subscribe if you like this sort of thing. If you want to get notifications when I do this again, ring the bell. All right, folks, there's you some planned dissonance. It takes worry man to sing worried song. It takes worry man to sing worried song. It takes worry man to sing worried song. I'm worried now, but I won't be worried now. See y'all next time.